Hello, and welcome to this service of Christian worship. The Wabash Avenue Presbyterian Church Church family and session and I, Reverend John Van Nuys, welcome you uh, as we continue to celebrate uh, the Easter season. Easter is not just a single Sunday, it lasts for a period of uh, seven Sundays. And during this time, we focus on the scriptures in which Jesus meets his followers uh, after his crucifixion, sh uh, showing him that he is alive and uh, his interactions with them. So during Lent, we focused on the um, necessary sacrifices to walk the way of the cross. And in the season of Easter, we celebrate the joy of Christ's resurrection. And we are thankful that you are part of that great cloud of witnesses uh, by participating in this worship service. Our prayer to prepare for worship was written by the children of the congregation. It's a wonderful prayer. Please join me. Let us pray. Jesus, gentle teacher, let us come to you with hope and with trust, for in your presence we shall be loved. Amen. Our call to worship, uh, if you downloaded the uh, accompanying uh, worship order, uh, you may say along with me, uh, we will uh, uh, alternate responsively. So, let us worship God. Followers of Jesus, by his cross we are redeemed from the futility of sin. Alleluia. By his rising we are free from the fear of death. Alleluia. By his love we are made new in the living and enduring word of God. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Our opening hymn will be sung by Will Borland. You are invited to join in. It is Christ is risen. Shout Hosanna. Christ is risen, shout Hosanna, celebrate this day of days. Christ is risen, rush in wonder, all creation is amazed. In the desert all surrounding, see a spreading tree has grown. Healing leaves of grace abounding, bring a taste of love unknown. Christ is risen, raise your spirits from the caverns of despair. Walk with gladness in the morning, see what love can do and dare. Drink the wine of resurrection, not a servant but a friend. Jesus is a strong companion, joy and peace shall never end. Christ is risen, earth and heaven, never more shall be the same. Break the bread of new creation, where the world is still in pain. Tell its grim demonic chorus, Christ is risen, get you gone. God the first and last is with us, sing Hosanna everyone. Let us now draw near to God to confess our sins. Hear now the call to confession. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us from all unrighteousness and cleanse our hearts. In humility and faith, let us now confess our sins to God. 
Please join me in our prayer of confession. Almighty God, our world is filled with corruption. Power disguises itself as truth. Convenience masquerades as goodness. Self-pleasure imitates love. We confess to you, O God, that we have been caught in the web of the world's sin. We have been casual about our faith. We have been cruel to others. We have threatened the life of your creation. Forgive us for the evil we have done and for the good that we have left undone. By the power of your Holy Spirit, help us to change. Free us for genuine love. Fill us with glad obedience that we may be new creations in your Easter kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let us now confess our sins silently. Amen. Receive now the declaration of pardon. Hear the good news. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into this world to save sinners. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross that we might be dead to sin and alive to all that is good. Friends, believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Let us now pray our prayer for illumination. Gracious God, be thou our vision as we open our hearts to your word given today. Amen. Today's scripture and sermon will be delivered by the Reverend Kelly Jepson. She is a Lake Fellow in Parish Ministry at Second Presbyterian Church and joins our congregation once a month. Please now prepare your hearts to come before God's word. Our scripture reading this morning is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verses 13 through 35. Listen now for the word of God. Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem and talking with each other about all the things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, said to him, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place in these days? He asked them, what things? They replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and in word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then Jesus said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer all these things 
and then enter into glory. Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. And when he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem. And they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told them what had happened on the road, and now he and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in the scriptures. Wow, how I wish I had been there to be a part of that conversation, to be in the presence of our divine teacher, whether we recognize it or not, and getting a full personal lesson. It's amazing because, well, if I'm being honest, I still have some questions too. And while I'd like to think that I would recognize Christ in these conversations in a moment like the one our fellow followers experienced, I know that's probably not the case. I will be the first to admit that there are times where I have encountered Christ and not seen it too. A few summers back, I was an intern chaplain at a correctional facility in Minnesota. When I first first started working with these incarcerated men, And although I tried my very best to fight it, I think I let fear and judgment cloud my vision and my understanding. The first few weeks of shadowing the chaplain and meeting with the men one-on-one felt more like counseling to me, a conversation with someone I was just trying to figure out. I was definitely having a hard time seeing Christ and the other human being before me. My work felt less spiritual and much more transactional. So in many ways, I sympathize with our travelers on this Emmaus road. Why is it that we can't fully see or experience what is right in front of us? I wonder what keeps them from acknowledging Christ in their midst. If we put ourselves in their shoes, we are reminded that their entire world has been turned upside down. Jesus asks a simple question, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? But they give him an emotionally complicated answer in return, a full story of grief, confusion, fear, and doubt. They express a lost hope in what they had just experienced. Part of me wonders if they didn't even notice Jesus because they didn't look up to see who the stranger was in their midst. Perhaps their eyes were just downcast from their broken hearts. Grief, sadness, fear, all of these complicated emotions change how we see situations, and they sometimes cloud our ability to take in all that is around us. As I noted before, their entire world had been turned upside down. Well, I don't know about you, but I sure can relate to that. All our normal ways of behaving have suddenly shifted in the last month. Instead of eating at restaurants, we are getting food to go and cooking in our own homes. Instead of going to the grocery stores, we're having the food delivered to us. We are distancing from friends and loved ones, the very people we would normally lean on when the world is this hard. Gone are the small seemingly inconsequential daily interactions with people that we would meet in the stores or on the street or even at work. Instead, we gather together electronically 
together in this new way. And I'm not saying all of these things are bad, but it signifies a change from our normal ways of life. And when we think of our, this in terms of our faith life, we're experiencing a shift there as well. Our regular ways of seeing and understanding and practicing our faith have changed. We don't have the privilege of gathering together, of meeting one another and seeing our faith echoed back to us in the sanctuary. Our expected interactions with God have moved from our churches into our own homes. And although God has, God's presence has never left us, never changed or wavered, I know that I have a harder time recognizing it outside of the church walls, just like those followers on the walk to Emmaus. The story reminds us, though, that um, as New Testament professor Caroline Lewis puts it, it's okay to be in the lack of recognition for a little while. This text is one of my favorites because it has always been relatable to me. It's ripe with details and dialogue, a rich story with a mysterious ending. What I never would have guessed, though, is that there would be a time when I would relate more to the feelings of the followers than to their actual actions. This Easter season, I can't imagine walking and talking with friends, inviting a stranger into my home, or even sharing a meal with someone I do not know. But I can relate to the fear, anger, confusion, anxiety, grief, and loss that they are experiencing. What gives me great peace in this text is that God encounters them in these moments. When they think that Christ has left this world, Christ digs deeper into their lives, asking questions and listening intently. Jesus not only meets them where they are in their physical journey, but also takes time to hear where they're actually at. There isn't a jump to soothe their pain or an interruption to keep them from losing hope. But instead, Jesus waits patiently to let them process what they had seen and experienced, to let them share their big, complicated feelings, even their lost hopes and dreams. Jesus knows. Jesus knows, but he chooses to listen to them anyways. Once they have finished, then and only then does Jesus begin to teach. And instead of merely answering their questions or trying to restore their hope, Jesus reaches all the way back and starts from the beginning, opening up the scriptures to them. It isn't a band-aid across their wounds, but rather a gently sewn suture, carefully tying up each loose end and piece of the story as he goes along. But even with all this knowledge and all the tools before them, they still do not recognize him. It's only when he meets them in the familiar that they can finally see Jesus. Jesus, we are told, took bread, blessed and broke it and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him. Now there had no doubt been many moments of teaching and walking with his disciples and his followers that, he, that the, these followers might have related to. But in this moment, something finally clicked. The gesture was too grand to ignore. The words and actions and symbolism all came together to create this atmosphere for recognition. And as soon as they realize it, they too realize that they had known all along. Were not our hearts burning within us, they ask one another. Were not our hearts burning deep down, didn't we already know? In that same way, I think we too look back and see places where we didn't recognize God in the moment. But maybe we felt something. We felt a presence. It's easy to ignore those nagging feelings or to write them off entirely. But sometimes we have to remember 
that being with the holy can be an embodied experience for us. We feel it in our body, in our bones. Our hearts burn. But we need that moment of familiarity amidst the chaos of life for it all to come into focus. I remember that turning point for me when I was working at the prison that summer. Thankfully, it happened earlier on because it completely changed my experience. And it too was this mix of familiar and chaos. I stayed late one evening to attend a Friday night revival, the Christian worship service in the gymnasium that was promised to be quite the event. I had struggled to see where Jesus was in this prison. My own personal sight was too clouded by layers of fear and confusion at what I was experiencing each day. But as I walked in, hearing those old hymns and seeing worship enacted in front of me, well, I couldn't help but see Jesus everywhere. The spirit was thick on that June evening in the crowded gym with 300 or so men from all different backgrounds and races, singing and praying, reading and proclaiming together. There was Jesus, and my heart too began to burn. He'd been there all along. I had just had to move past myself, past my own emotions and blockades in order to see it. As I said, it completely changed me. After that, I could start to see these men as fellow travelers on this complicated road of life. This current time of social distancing and sheltering in place has us looking at all aspects of our lives in a different and new light. Some of the ways we have religiously expressed our faith for years are suddenly not available to us. I think about how much I have taken for granted the experience of meeting God in a full sanctuary on a Sunday morning. I'm so filled with the spirit when we're all gathered together, so in tune with God's presence in my life by those moments that I forget that I experience them all week long. And if I'm being honest, I had stopped looking for them. But now we must adapt. We have to look for new ways to invoke these Jesus moments, to be more in tune with how they are already happening all around us. God is fully at work in our homes and neighborhoods already. We just have to be attentive to notice it. We have to watch for the familiar amidst the chaos. The promise of this story is that Amidst everything, all the chaos and confusion, even when the world is turned upside down for us, there will be a glimpse of recognition of God in our midst. In this time, we have to trust that Jesus will intervene, but maybe in ways we do not expect, and maybe even in ways that we do not recognize. But rest assured, Jesus will meet us on this road. Meet us where we are, even now. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Let us unite our hearts in prayer, saying, God of resurrection, hear our prayer. For the church throughout the world, as we celebrate the resurrection this Easter season, during these troubled times, that we may renew our faith and strengthen our witness to our Savior, God of resurrection, hear our prayer. For the governments of the world and its leaders and all in positions of authority, especially our President Donald and our Governor Eric, that they may serve the common good and lead us all safely out of this pandemic, God of resurrection, hear our prayer for our planet Earth, that all people may be good stewards of its resources, share in its abundance, protect its life, and preserve creation for future generations. God of resurrection, hear our prayer. For the poor and the stranger, that they may receive a place of refuge, welcome, and hope, 
and that they may receive your love through our compassion. God of resurrection, hear our prayer. For the sick and those in distress, for their families and all who are combating the coronavirus, that your healing may abound, restoring us all to fullness of health, life, and joy. God of resurrection, hear our prayer. For our neighbors, that we may live together in peace and help one another, making sure that everyone has enough to live. God of resurrection, hear our prayer. For our enemies, that they may receive good things, and that we, your servants, may not return evil for evil. God of resurrection, hear our prayer. O oh God, we ask your blessing upon these persons and concerns which we now name silently before you. Almighty God, receive the prayers we offer and by the power of your Holy Spirit, make us faithful, joyful witnesses to the resurrection of our Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn, which is on page five of your worship order, if you downloaded it, will be sung by our choir director, Jenny Fight Swick. It is Day of Arising. gathering together for worship and invoking those memories of God to one another. But I know that this is the best for our communities right now. And I trust, I trust that God will meet us on our journeys, wherever we might be this morning. I encourage you to be open, to watch for God to be made known to you in familiar ways and also in new experiences. And remember, as one of my favorite creeds, a new creed from the United Church of Canada, so simply reminds us, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. 
Amen. And now may God, our creator, bless you and keep you. May Jesus, our savior, meet you along your Emmaus road. And may the spirit, our sustainer, uphold and enliven you in these days and forevermore. Amen. Thank you.